encourage him to come through. But yeah, <laughs> like maybe Baba. Yeah. You try to give you a couple. And days. Buddha was a surprise. Which Buddha? I don't know. Uh, Jim, can you knock on the microphone like a few times? Just Is that good? Yeah, perfect. All right. Okay. So I'll do the way. Yes. Okay. Can you see me? I didn't yes, have a chance to meditate this morning. Huh? I didn't have a chance to meditate this morning. Usually I do, but I got up and cleaned the house instead. <laughs> That's a meditation in itself. Yeah, it is. Oh, wow. That's bright. Just, all right, we'll, be, we'll, do, we'll, we'll do it in the dark. That's okay. Do what in the dark? Everything. It looks light. We'll do everything in the dark. We're going All we to have is your knees. You want to move over some more here? Oh. <laughs> no, because on the camera over there, you can see me perfectly. That's the one that's count. All right. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. I see. Uh, hello, everybody. We start our um, broadcast. Um, what do we want to say? Um, we'll do the channeling as usual. Um, we had lots of technical problems with the Wi-Fi. We moved to Jim's house and Wi-Fi wasn't working. So I'm, I'm up. I need to apologize. I didn't prepare the questions from the printed out. But we have a couple people online and we have three guests who are alive here. And um, that's already plenty. Um, my only personal announcement was that I feel that our audience, we have about 200 people watching, uh, is very poor and the donations dry dry up. And we can't continue much longer with it. We need your donations. So please go find it, find jobs, get the money and donate it to us. <laughs> I yeah. just got a job myself. Yeah, oh, that's very good. Mazel tov, congratulations. Go find jobs. <laughs> Uh, go find <laughs> jobs and donate, donate advice. better. <laughs> yes. And that's what I'm doing. come from honest means? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's a huge question. Honest, I mean, every, every job has a deception in it. Yeah. I mean, there is no jobs without deception. Even a beggar has a deception. Um, I think we ought to go mainstream. Uh, if we want to make a difference, we need to be not sitting at home and saving last pennies. We need to go uh, forward, join mainstream, and transform it from inside. That's my understanding. My prayer of lately is, dear God, uh, I invite your help. Help me to be successful in important things. Dear God, help me to be successful in important things. That's my, my prayer. So I want to be doing something important. And right now, uh, it's nice that you know we got to that nice awareness, but now we need to make, make to change things. And to change things, you have to go uh, bigger and go mainstream and transform the mainstream life. And here I start, I put microphone close to Jim and let Jim channel. <laughs> If you want okay. to say something before, it's fine. But I think if you just start chuckling, it's fine as well. Okay. Well, I'm going to do a little bit of meditation. Everybody out there, be real positive and protect yourselves. As I always tell everybody, to that is, I'm protected by fission, but not everybody is protected. So up, down, front, back, side to side. Put yourself in a protective bubble with the white light and, and make sure you're thinking in positive ways and um, you'll be fine so not that you wouldn't otherwise but it's just an extra step of protection so and I think it's it's a wise idea and thank you for coming everybody here and everybody out there and uh, I'm gonna do a little meditation
Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. What are your names? Oh, Caitlin. Caitlin and Michael. 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 Greetings, Michael. Yes. yes. Barbara, Marjorie. Yes. And Diana. I have met them before. Yes. <laughs> One moment. I will be fine. <laughs> it always takes a moment to get into the body properly. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there we go. Thank you. That's what you do in the morning. You wake up and get into the body. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. So, what are you doing today? We meet with you, and it's all open floor. I don't have many cleaning questions. Oh. Well, then I will tell you what I am doing. Okay. I am starting my new course in my on my planet, in my planet, on my planet, wherever you want to say. I am right now still working in the band. You know what the band is, right? Mm -hmm. The know. band is around the center of the planet where we go after our last curriculum. We go to the band and we work there for a period of time that was chosen by those above us. And um, those above us being the, the technical aspects of the planet. The, we let them choose how much time is appropriate between curriculum for each individual person because we are all different. So I am here now in the band, but I am still able to, to do this kind of work there because what I do there is basically very menial and I just make sure that things are running smoothly. I am a more or less guard of the machinery as it as it moves along its up uh, uh, linear movements, and I am preparing for my next curriculum. And I have several choices, so that is what I am doing at this time. So, if there are questions. Perhaps I can answer some questions for you. I just found a fine question. What do your people eat? Um, okay, that's an interesting question. We do eat, as you know, but not like you eat. We do not have full spreads of meals and desserts and things. We uh, take a supplement and we keep ourselves in chemical balances whereas your people have problems with chemical balances. So that is our main source of supplement, is to fuel the body with supplements and keep the chemistry of the body in proper order. We do take many different kinds of liquids, and that seems to be the most... We do eat some things, mostly at celebrations. This would be your forms of sweets, as you would have it, or things that are not so potentially helpful for the body. But we do daily take supplements and drink much fluids that have vitamins and much supplements in them. Does that answer your question? We do not eat a lot. Mm -hmm. We more take supplements and drink a lot. If we eat your food, your food, you will get sick. Well, since we don't have really much food, yes, you probably would get sick on some of it, yes. <laughs> I'm certain. <laughs> All right, I will read the question. So, Robbie, do you know, you know Robbie, right? Robbie. Robbie, from UK. Yes. A DJ from UK. I think he is also, you know, his name is Major something. All right. That's Rawi. Rawi. Okay. I would like to ask about Raelian movement. www.raelrael.org. And Rael, not much as validation. I'm looking for just to confirm my thoughts about or to give another angle on such matters. Rael claims he was 
visited by a group of beings called Elohim, one of which was called Yahweh in 1970s and it's a pretty amazing story which he was instructed to write down and it's called the messages he visited a planet a year after and a second meeting and met all the prophets and was told he was last one the last one by the Elohim can you comment on that I'm not sure what he means by the last one but yes, there is Elohim, there is Yahweh, and there they have visited the earth many times, and his messages are very ad adequate and genuine. I'm not sure what he means by he is the last one. I'm not sure what he means. And what planet did he visit? I, I am not w aware of that. But... I can tell you that his messages are very full of inspiration and and uh, spiritual uplifting so and insights that is a good thing yes what dimension are Elohim and they are Elohim? spiritual dimension they are spirits so they're not physical they're like L El. Uh -huh. L El, Elohim very similar a different form of the same kind of collective. Ah. But when in the biblical times were they physical? They were physical at once, yes. In biblical times? At some time. I'm not saying at biblical times. I do not know that for sure. <laughs> Alright, then we jump to the next question. But I really like the photographs. If you Google our alien movement, the photographs are amazing. They are very hippie-like. It's Raelian movement is hippies. In good in good sense, European hippies in a good sense, very smiley, very happy. European hippies, I do not understand. Our oh, hippie movement was uh, about seven years ago, 1963. It started in California, and they wear clothes like that, beards like that, and were happy like that. I, <laughs> I know. Oh, I oh, oh hippie. Okay. All right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I am. Yes. <laughs> like Max, yes. <laughs> All right. Um, but they also smoked, smoke, smoked a lot of stuff, which I don't at the moment. Um, when alien... Uh, next question is by Nick James. Uh, I'm inviting only a general question, not personal ones. When alien... From, from the in written form. When alien DNA is introduced after birth to a human period. How does it become integrated and expressed as a percentage? Three periods. In uh, the other DNA, is, is the other DNA removed or do we just have more of it after yes. the procedure? Or does it, the DNA absorb some of our human DNA? Very good questions. And yes, it, you have more DNA at first. And it, yes, it does integrate. I'm not sure if absorb is the right word, but integrates with your DNA and actually changes it slightly to so that it can fit with your DNA. And it, um, it changes the patterns of DNA only in the slightest way th so that it does not change physical appearance, but sometimes does change emotional habits and sometimes changes spiritual activity. What other part of that question was there? Basically... Uh, there is tons of questions. Do you want to say something? Yes. I was going to say, when DNA is added after the fact, after conception, and even at conception, there is always someone to watch to see if this DNA has a, a life of its own within that person. To say that, uh, to show any of the whatever species of um attitude personality uh emotions might come through in that little bit of ways a humans and aliens are already somewhat alike but there are certain differences that they look for
Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, specifically, um, are L repeats or line one elements affected by alien DNA? Line one elements meaning what? It's the name. Of, it's the name of repetitive element, a transposon. Uh, it's called line one or LOs. These are main ones. Yes, it can be. Depending on their intention for the DNA. Thank you. Our uh, next question is, are there any benevolent draconians? Yes, there are some benevolent draconians, but most of them are more... They keep their societies to themselves. They are at one time were not a friendly species to humans because they found humans appetizing. However, <laughs> this was many, many thousand years ago. So they have learned that feeding upon humanity is not something that look, is looked upon as a good thing in the galaxy. But they are now much more in sync with the rules of the galaxy and they do not partake. Does that answer your question? Uh, thank you much. Uh, it is a good answer. Um, next, uh, Hayana, Hahana or Hajana, or Hayana asks, uh, ask about mermaids, mermaids, are they, can they be channeled? There has not been a channeled mermaid. They do not have that element to channel at this time. They are, a th they are an Atlantean creature, originally, oh. yes. And, but, since the destruction of Atlantis, they had fallen from their higher spot and had to become something they really were not. So, I don't know if that makes any sense to you, but... I, I know what Atlantean creature is, but some people might not. Can you explain? Atlantis was a continent that was destroyed, a civilization that was far advanced, that f has some fingers in the Egyptian cultures as well and the Mayan cultures as well so you you have people that have broken off from Atlantis and gone other places so you find that they had um, gone other places on the earth and left their marks as well but the the advanced Atlantean culture had such a high vibration and was very peaceful and was destroyed by, I will not say who, because I do not think that that knowledge is available to you, but um, it was destroyed and was completely taken away from your planet. And you will not find much of it left here because it was... Take, after it was destroyed, they came and disassembled many things and took it away. But um, it was a very highly advanced society which mermaids were part of. But now they are a lower creature because they fell into negativity. Let's put it that way. They fell into negative negativity, but they still do exist on your planet, but not in a great amount. I think Zakaria commented who destroyed Atlantis, but I forgot. I think it was Martians involved. Were Martians the, the ones? You might call them Martians, but they were not from Mars. But they did reside there for a while. Yes. Thank you. Uh, now I invite questions from people online. Um, I think Caitlin came very early and um, she would be first in line. Caitlin, do you have any questions to ask? Yes, please do. Give her the mic. Well, my main question is, am I a starseed? Like, do I have any origins? <laughs> we all have our origins, yes. Are you asking if you are a hybrid? 
Is that what you are asking? Or if that you have friends in the galaxy, which question are you asking? Or do you have relatives in the galaxy? Or do you have children in the galaxy? There's many different questions you can pull from that starseed word. And yes, you are. And yes, you've had, in three lifetimes, you have been either, in one lifetime that I can see right now, for sure, you were an alien in an alien culture. And you have very many thoughts about that earlier. You were thinking that you... You must be alien because you do not fit into some of the things that are normal. Do you feel that way? Yeah, I do. A lot. Shh. Yes, there was one lifetime which actually was a very happy lifetime for you that you were an alien. I think that this human body now craves for that kind of a lifetime in this world. It will not be the same. However, you do have alien DNA within you and it is Pleiadian. I cannot give you a percentage because I am not accurate with those at this time. That's okay. I'm just, I'm just happy you answered me. Thank you. You're welcome. What, what uh, culture was it alien like? She was Pleiadian. So she has now Pleiadian DNA and her soul has a lot of Pleiadian vibration. Yes. So this is a continuation. I believe when she returned to Earth this time that uh, she requested that it overlap some with her Pleiadian past. And it will in the future overlap a little more. How about her children? Not at this time. All right. Um, then I guess Michael' turn is if you want to ask any questions. Yeah, um, I would just like to know if I have uh, an alien family as well. If I'm a star seed. You have connections to alien families. Yes. You are from. You are family is from the Andromedan area. Uh, there is, yes. Yeah, Andromeda is a galaxy with billions of stars. Right. Yes. You far from the Andromedan galaxy. I feel like I'm um, uh, pretty detached to this lifetime. Um, awesome. That is not surprised. Even, yeah. even in Andromeda. To be honest with you, I feel like. I'd like to be done with it. But that just means that I have a severe disconnection with my higher self. And that I just need to work on that to elevate perhaps my, uh, my um, galactic uh, vibration. And then maybe that will take care of itself. But I'm having trouble with that. There are things that you need to do to energize yourself because when I told you that you were from Andromeda, many Andromedans are very detached from their, their very solo, solitudinous, I don't know what the word is. Yeah. They're very, they're creatures of solitude, but they do have their times when they come together, but they find that they're enriched by the solitude because it, you know, on their planet there are many underlying sounds and vibrational energies that surround their planets, the two planets that they reside in that you would be a part of, that, that actually calm and and make peaceful the soul so that being alone is not such a terrible thing there. They are s s detached from one another, but when they come together, they are very friendly and uh, almost gregarious. I can't say that they're actually gregarious, but... I have a, I have a loving heart, and I'm, I'm yes. very much loved first, but I love being alone, but I know I need that human contact. 
Yes. Uh, that's, that's essential to have that, that contact with others. It can create situations. You can't grow alone. You yes, you cannot grow. You can grow alone, but you grow better with people on Earth, and I will tell you why. Because of uh, you do not have the telepathy. You do not have the the ability to connect in a way that makes things nourishing to each other. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Makes sense to me. But you do have connections on Earth that bring the spirit up and bring the vibration up and, and cause things to be greater or lesser because you are very intense beings. And in your situation, I can see that you have a desire to find something outside of this existence that you're living now, but you cannot possibly know what that is, right? Is that you do not see that you do not see the future. You don't see a future. Ah. Very recluse the last few years, and I was told by a benevolent reptilian from Capella that there are many fifth and sixth density reptilians that love my energy and that are around me a lot. But I'm full of love, so that... And uh, that, 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 that stays on my mind a lot. And um, I'm wondering if I do more meditations, if I do more work, I will then rise to a seventh and eighth and then be above their sixth. Do you know what I mean? Yes. That'll take care of it, but that is, I have a hard time um, uh, meditating because I, I, I see, I, like, I feel too electric inside of me. Being, and being that you're an Andromedan hybrid, not a hybrid, not really, you are just from Andromedan past. This makes total sense that you would be in conflict in Earth because of your... You see what I was telling you about the sensations around the planets there? Those are the things that you are feeling that you're missing in this lifetime as those sensations that, that, that you could dwell on that moves you up through the depression and through the fog that you speak of and you do have talents. What yeah. is your? What do you feel is your greatest talent? Is it music? Uh, to perhaps help uh, those that are uh, more of a coarse nature that have dealt with uh, addictions. I have been an addict, and I've gotten out of that. And I can perhaps help the ones that can't reach you, but that, that are part of our collective. And I'd love to be able to help in some way or another. Um, unfold my wings of glory, so to speak, and to help them. Does this saying this make the fog a little less? Yes, it makes me feel very expansive. You are expansive. Please take advantage of that. Please uh, take advantage really, of the fact... i really, really buzzing right now. Thank you. <laughs> Please take advantage of the fact that your ability to help others cannot be held back by this fuzziness in your head. The reptilians, every person I speak to that is a human and is surrounded by reptilians has fuzziness in their head. Um, every single one. Every single one. So I must tell you... We're all 25% reptilians. Sorry to interrupt. Now, that's from the beginning of time, perhaps, but um, not, not as a hybrid thing, no. We have much questions about what you really are from the beginning, but, but uh, let me tell you this. There is something within you that you must release. It's this love for others is your basis for growth, for your basis for light and love. And you must get out and find these... Are you a member of any groups? Um, yes, I'm, um, I 
go to a methadone clinic, do you know what methadone is? It is a chemical. Yes. yes. It is given to um, people who get off heroin and very heavy opioids. Like, ah, uh, yes. I understand. You know, yes. Right. And um, that's, that's what I take because I was a heavy, 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 heavy user. And right now I'm on methadone to control all the past chemicals that I have quit. Ah. I quit everything. So now I'm on this. And it does affect my mood still. Yes. And I feel that I can't be myself to like completely purge of all of the chemicals, but I need this chemical to stay normalized. For well, now. for now. But wean yourself off of it. Let me tell you how you can do... Hold on one moment. Smutas kebarasti ishko poftimi tikita orante karakosh metati suko koratan pasta tare ilato tu pashote ban ha ha ta suta baba si tika most I have sent you some energy. You will find that even though you need this chemical now, please do not stop taking it because of what I'm going to say. You are actually much better than you think. You are much more in control than you actually want to be at this time. And this is a source of a problem for you because you do not feel driven to do anything yet. You must take the energy that is coming to you and transform it into the chemical that you are taking and put it in your body and instead of taking the chemical, take the em energy and transform it. But do not do that yet. Okay. You will know the time. You will know the time. But you have the ability to transform yourself off of this dependency because you have a great thing to teach others. You have help to give to others. And with you being on methadone you cannot help because they will not let you it is like saying I am blind I will teach you how to see so you must take yourself off and when you feel the need for these dependencies bring the energy in and transform it into that particular feeling does that make sense to you the energy will replace the actual physical drug. Yes, it will. And it will give you the same feelings as the drug did. Because sometimes you need that feeling and you think, you believe that you need that feeling and so you do. So For it now. It will be a placebo effect. It will be actually. It'll yes. Actually feel it. Yes. Because that's what you need now, but you will eventually grow away from that when you realize that reality is full of joy, love, and happiness, and you will actually be addicted to life in reality. Awesome. Thank you so much. I love you. <laughs> I love you, too. Did you understand what I was saying? 100% and, and you put a smile on my face and hope in my heart, so thank you. Yes, do not stop taking your methadone yet. Okay. Not until you feel the energy come within you and that you can transform it. Because I feel it doesn't take, um, it doesn't work as well as it did in the beginning and it's not the sort of drug that does that. That is right. So that is why I'm telling you that to take what is that of energy and make it what is that that you need because that is energy is everything 
Everything in the world, in the universe, has energy within it. Does that make sense? And it can be made, and it can be made into anything. Very good. Uh, who is next? I don't see the name, uh, but it, you see, you look a little greenish on the screen. Yes. Hello. <laughs> You're welcome. It's my YouTube account. Okay. Who am I yeah. speaking to? Gabriel. Hey, Gabriel. Gabriel. You are not the angel, Gabriel. <laughs> what? What did you say? You are not the angel, Gabriel, are you? No. Yeah. No. I, ha I have a guardian angel. Yes. Yes, you do. Continue. Yes, yeah, I don't know so much about it. Gabriel, if you can ask questions, personal or general, it would be great. How about the, I have a counterpart in the Yale sensation. Can you tell me anything about him? I'm not sure I un heard the question. Uh, he has a counterpart from Yael. Yes. Can you tell anything about him? Yes, he is on the spaceship that is around this planet. But he's not in this continental area. He is in the Asian continental area spaceship. Did you know that? When I speak to him, he's usually in Hawaii. Shh, he can go there. Yeah. But he I is but he is a member of the ship that belongs to the Asian continent. Okay. That is not so far away from Hawaii. Any more questions, Samuel? His name is Vansid. Can, can you tell me what my frequency is? I will, if I can, I will, but if it is not 100% accurate, I will not say. I can only, I go through... I must have double checks on frequencies at this time. You are in the four category, but I cannot tell you exactly four point what. Thank you. Uh, that is a great answer. Any more questions, Gabriel? Yeah. Before we that, I could be in two places at once. How does that work? That is what Explore. we call out-of-body experience or or are you actually in two places, or do you go there in a spirit form? Did they tell you that? No, they, they said that I can explore being at two places at once, but it would be confusing for me as from the beginning. Usually... When you are in two places at once, usually for earthlings, one's, one area is when you are at rest, and the other area is when you are exploring or doing other activity outside the body in a different place. Now, there are times when humans have been in two places at once, literally, because of alien Im imposing themselves upon them, but they they needed to do this for the sake of keeping history correct. And what I mean by that is there, I will give you an example. There was a name, his name was Peel, Italian. He needed to see his mother, who was very, very sick. 
but yet he was 380 miles away or something like that, and he could not get there, not even in two days, and she was going to die. But he needed to tell her things, and so his body duplicated and was there with her as well as somewhere else. Does that make sense to you? There are reasons for the body to separate and be in two places at once. It does not happen without meaning or reason. It does not happen just for fun, as you would say. There are specific reasons. And if they have told you that this will happen, there will be a specific reason for this to happen, perhaps more than once, but not usually more than twice, at least for earthlings. Do you have any more questions? Yeah, I had two beings that visited me in my bedroom okay. and woke, woke, woke me up right. for five, six seconds and then they disappeared. Can you yes. tell me about them? They were. Did they speak to you? I'm losing. Uh, well, vocally, I don't know if I connected to them or not. I believe they were there originally. How long ago was this? Three months? Many years ago. Many years ago? Never mind. That was not an invitation. Uh, one moment, please. Yes, much better. Yes, this was a visitation. They were doing some experiments on you. Experiments. What race was that? <coughs> they were Pleiadians. Good ones? Yes. Did they remind you of Pleiadians? What did they look like? They had big eyes. Yes. And I think they were grey. Okay. They were great. Okay. They were the... Wait a minute. But they were the taller ones. I only saw the heads. Two heads and they were very interested in me. And it sounds like they accidentally uh, woke me up. I... That's what I felt, that they didn't, didn't mean to wake me up. But I don't know. They were Pleiadians, for sure. Um, their appearance, was it dark? It was, their, my, room, my room was dark, but yes. they were, had a blue light that yes. kind of went right through yes. them. Okay, that's fine. They were Pleiadians. They did look like greys to you, I'm sure. That's fine. Um, they might have wanted to look like a different species at that time. I'm not sure why they would want to look like greys at that time, but they were Pleiadians that visited you for sure. And um, they are interested in you for many reasons. You have um, a a psychic ability that uh, has not yet fully been experienced by you. Uh, but are you aware of that? I can uh, communicate with three spirits and spirits in the forest. Yes. My you, counterpart told me. Yes, you are a psychic, and this was an interest to them, and you is still an interest to aliens because they do visit you more than what you know. Well, let me move to the next question. I think it's Ellie. Ellie, are you there? Yeah, hi. Hello. Hello, Hello Lakesh. Uh, love and light from me. Thank you. I'm really happy being here and uh, reaching you and reaching all of you guys. Hello and thank you for being who you are. <laughs> Hello, who are you? I cannot see the screen, I am sorry. 
Uh, my name is Elena. I'm Hello. from Bulgaria. Hello, Elena. This is from Eastern Europe, the Balkans, very and nice. Bulgaria. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. I'm a I'm a big fan, as we say. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have questions for me? Yes, I want to know uh, which which are the aliens that are that are flying around the Balkans, Eastern Europe. And it's my area of living. Is it red orbs, orange orbs? I haven't seen anything. I just want to know, as, as an information. The reptilians have been very visual lately with red and orange orbs. They're letting people see them. I'm not sure of their, their reasoning behind that. But also, uh, whenever... Any spaceship that you call spaceship falls out of fourth dimension, it is able to be seen by the third dimension, moves into the third dimension, and sometimes that happens when it touches the edges of your magnetic field, it disables the, it changes the fourth dimension in some way. So, and makes things visible. So, but I am thinking that your s people are seeing the reptilian orbs. All right. Uh, do we have uh, Yael or Pleiadians that are um, that are here and watching over our parts of yes. the world? Yes, there is a ship from Grkvignir from ever for every continent. All right. I, I I really want to. I I feel I have to uh, do something like um, like a meeting of people and explain. Of course, people that want to be enlightened yes. and explain and tell them about different aliens, different cultures, and in general, just let them know that we are not alone. Yes, this is the intent of all of us who are off your world to let you know that we are here now it is time for you to know us in a more close way we want you to know us first as personalities from beyond and then we will find the means and ways to become friends and physical friends. Yes. Does that make... F yes. yes. And yes, for you to be telling others, be careful, others may find you a bit unusual. Thank but... They, they find me a lot unusual. <laughs> I am yes. sensing that yes. that makes no difference to you. Yes, but... but that speaks with dead people, so to say. This, this person was something like a spiritual teacher for me. Yes. Uh, lots of, lot of time, long years. Yes. But uh, I'm, I'm interested, uh, who is this person serving? Is, uh, is she serving uh, the, the, the grace or, or some other species? The one who, the one you're speaking of, who channels spirits. Yes. She is not helping the aliens at this time. I but so. she is not helping aliens. But she is helping people connect to their loved ones that have gone beyond. However, let me tell you this. I. I was not quite finished with my what I had to say to you about speaking to others about aliens. Be very careful what you say because you want them to believe. You want them to believe and if you are too f far out they will not believe. You must be very human common and personal to them, which you seem to be a very grounded individual.
I was just giving that. Let me go to the personal questions, if it's okay. Yes. I I I know I'm visited in my dreams uh, but um, have I haven't been taken on a ship on an alien ship because I dream something like that one moment I will check this Your spirit was sent Your spirit was sent and it was a brief visit mm -hmm. But yes you saw things and you have been visited for the intent of possibly joining one of the colonies If you visit the colonies, let us know. <laughs> send us a postcard. <laughs> yeah, send us a postcard. Um, you, yes. you, you are the kind of person they are looking for for the colonies. I am surprised they have not taken you yet, but they are observing for a good period of time before they do take people now. So, I am... I I have a nine months old baby, and maybe that's why I need to stay here for a little bit more. Uh, yes. My baby is also, I think, a hybrid, but I'm not sure what kind. Yes, you were hoping for a hybrid child. Were you not? And what kind of hybrid child were you wishing for? Oh, Canadian for sure. <laughs> I'm in love with them. <laughs> you have your wish. Simultaneously, something like an alien speech. So, in it's something like in translation. I didn't heard. There was something very strange. I, I heard people talking, but in in an alien language. What was that? You had tuned into the people that were visiting you at that time. You were being visited. They were tempted to speak to you, but they did not speak to you. But they might in the future. I hope so. But yes, you were hearing both the translation and the actual original language. Mm -hmm. But they did not quite get to you in your mind. It got to a certain point and then it, they stopped. Yes. Um, I, got, I got really sick after that. I developed uh, something on my breast and I had to drink antibiotics for like 10 days. I, got, I had high fever. There was something, a problem with my body after, after this. I don't know what happened, but uh, maybe I got confused. I have no idea. I do not think you, that that was caused by this interaction. Perhaps you picked up a virus. <coughs> but I do not think the communication was the cause of your illness. It may, see, it may have seemed that it came, the illness came directly after your communication. However, they would not give you such things. And if they, d they would immediately 
take it away if if they indeed caused it. So I do not believe that that was anything alien. Next time when that happens, uh, tell them one way or another. Maybe through a website would be just fine. Or we can email Jim and he would tell them. Yes, I will let them know. Yeah, every time we have things like that, I immediately call Jim and things disappear next day or in the next few days. All right, I will, I will do that. And one last question. I'm yes. sorry for taking your time. No, no, it's good, it's good. It's, uh, I just want to ask about the Merkaba meditation. And uh, I am uh, getting a Metatron cube. Uh, get, um, a, a friends are making for me a 3D Metatron cube, yes. which should help me like an antenna for yes. my meditation. Because as this uh, boy, I have also problems with my meditation. It's not so clear. So what do you think about the Merkaba and the Metatron cube in general? The Metatron cube will definitely help you. I'm not sure what that first word that you said. Merkaba, Merkaba. Oh, Markaba. Yes. Um, and what did you want to know? Markaba is good. Yes. Yes. Is it? Is it okay for me to do it? Is yes, it, it's okay. It it is okay, but you must do it exactly the way it's supposed to be. I I perceive that there is one part of it that you're not doing correctly. Yes, if you do it correctly, you will feel wonderful and get much from it. I will do my best. Uh, well, thank you. I, I wish you love and light. A and blessing to I you. We will succeed. <laughs> we will succeed. You will succeed. We will succeed as well. But blessings to you. And I see that you, they will be visiting you again. So be prepared for that. But having a nine-month-old child does stop them from taking you for even one hour. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. The child has to be at least 24 months before they will take you. Blessings to you. Blessings. Thank you. You are welcome. Uh, I just want to cast you. If you have any more questions, I think I sh cut you short and uh, maybe you can... Are you on mute right now? So, okay. I kind of... I, okay, I kind of do have a question. And it, it's been bothering me for a while. Um... I feel like I'm being observed, like I've been having dreams, and it's fragments, and it's it's really bugging me, because I, I dream really big, and I cannot remember them, and I usually do remember these dreams, and it's, it's been bugging me so much, and I just don't know what to do, like I, I feel like I was helping them last night, or something. You have much visitations. Yes, you do, and... There will be a dream that will come to you that you will remember, and this will bring back some of the fragments that you are not remembering. They will be meaningful in a time in the future, but right now they are not wanting you to remember them until you are able to understand. Because, let me tell you this, when you understand what you are dreaming, that's when you will remember it. Does that make sense to you? The, because you cannot understand what they are trying to tell you right now, you will not remember it. However, I, I know what they are trying to tell you, and it is a good message, and you will get it later. So please be patient. I know it's driving you crazy, you say, <laughs> but um, you will be sane. You. you will be sane. I mean, I applied a couple days ago, and it's just amazing how I've been having these dreams, you know? Like, it's happened so quickly. Yes. I'm, I'm so glad. <laughs> like, 
I, I, I don't know. I've been feeling all the energy lately, and I've been watching your guys' videos, and I'm really inspired. And I, especially you, you have a really good energy. <laughs> I just want you to know that, and I really like your work. Thank you very much. I guess I, you are popular now. <laughs> <laughs> I am laughing because it is funny. <laughs> Please share your experiences on our uh, website because what they, what you experience uh, helps others a lot. It is time for me to go though. Blessings to you. You will discover many things about the energy around you, Rick. Yes, Mike, Mike, Michael. You will discover many things about the energy around you. There's another name, Rick, that will discover the energy around him too, but I'm talking to Mike now. Thank you, Lakesh. Pleasure to have you. And your, your session today was great. And thank you for not giving our, our numbers where, where I wasn't sure. Blessings to all of you. I must go. Things must be gotten done. Hey, say hi to your friends. Futam spietas Oh, hello. Hi, Gene. Hi. Hello. Hello. All right. I just... Uh, <laughs> comes to my tea. <laughs> uh, I wanted to share... Um, so, Lakesh last time said that... Um, I'll turn a little bit to myself. Uh, Lakesh last time said that there is a two members of the site who have visited the colony and came back, or I've been visiting the colony all the time. And so far we haven't heard from the side, uh, from the colonies at all directly. Uh, anything that comes, comes through Jim, a little bit comes from Zakaria, but, but we didn't hear from, uh, from people who have visited. And Lakesh said that the problem is that, you know, they know so much and they're allowed to talk about their visit, but they don't, aren't allowed to talk about what they learned there, so they are hesitant to come public. Uh, and I just wanted to share the technical possibilities, how you can let us know without exposing your identity. Uh, obviously, you don't want to be, you know, you might you might not be ready you like to expose your identity, your families, your jobs, and so on. So how to stay anonymous and let us know. Obviously, whatever you do through the computer is can be traced. So the secret government can trace you and confirm their suspicions. So how to do that anonymously? Mm, a simple way would be when you travel, you can come to any uh, library and if you don't have to identify yourself, you just type a message on a computer and you can send it you can post a, uh, you can, uh, on, on our website is, there is an application form, you can post anonymously anything there, and if you do it from a public computer, there is, you know, it would be really, really, really difficult to trace, especially if you run away fast and they don't notice you, you know, wear dark glasses. <laughs> 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 so from public computer, you can leave anonymous message without uh, registering on, on the site. That would be the easiest possible way to contact us. Uh, especially when you travel. Uh, I, of course, I, I, guess, I guess if you are from some strange place where there is no other, from the place where there is no other members and say you are from, I don't know, Novosibirsk. And, you know, if you do it from Novosibirsk library, then they can trace you back because they know everybody who is on the side, all 200 people or so. But if you travel, you know, to New York City, then... Uh, we have people from there or Canada, so then they cannot trace you. And another thing is a postcard, as, as somebody said. Uh, you know, you can just print it out, uh, 
you know, use gloves, don't lick the envelope, but, you know, print out your message, hey, I have been to the Colony Max, and uh, uh, it's easy to find my address. Um, actually, do I have an address? I don't, uh, yeah, Jim, Jim has address on the side, I think. I do? I don't know if you have addresses. <laughs> All right. You have a Skype, you have a Skype too. Yes, I yeah, no, no, I mean the, the postal street address. I guess I will post the street address on, on the contacts. But, you know, you can easily, easily find it. You know, Max Steinberg street address is very easy. And Jim, Jim Charles Reiki is also, is, yeah. we are online, but we're not on the site. So, I'm at uh, jimreiki at gmail.com. Yeah, but I'm talking about street address. Oh, and the street, street address. address. No. 129 Cobb Terrace, C O B B Terrace, uh, Rochester, New York, 14620. So please, w people who have visited the, uh, visited the colonies, share what you can share. Uh, we really need that validation that would greatly inspire us and especially our uh, viewers and uh, members of the site. And, uh, yeah, find jobs and donate to us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jim is uh, now occupied pretty well, not fully, but, you know, what, 40%, 50%? Well, I have, uh, I had four channelings this week. Oh, wow. And I have actually, two of them are today, so. You just channeled this morning before that. Mm -hmm. you? you channeled at 8 a.m. in the morning? Oh no, not yet. I we changed the time. I have a four o'clock and an eight o'clock, and right. they're both out of the country. So Jim, some days Jim spends more time out of his body than in his body. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I'm starting to think like an alien. <laughs> so 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 Jim is available for private sessions. You can reserve them uh, through Skype, email, um, and even telephone, and pay through the site, and. Um, Donations are welcome. Zachariah is also uh, uh, has a page on our site, so you can donate to Zachariah as well. Uh, I guess uh, that, that is all for. Uh, are you ready to do other channeling, or you're done to, for now? I don't know if anybody else is around, but yeah. we could give it a shot if you want. Let's do a little discussion, and then we let let Jim kind of you know get a bit more of uh, rest, and then we'll try another. Another channel, and if, if anybody comes through, I'm sending you some Reiki from Bulgaria. Thank you. I just became a Reiki. Oh, wow. I I just became a Reiki master this week. Good. I'm first level, but a master is very interesting. It's it's amazing feeling. I've heard. Yes, it is. It's wonderful. I just got it this week. Good. So, Bravo. thank you. I feel different. Yes, it is great. So, uh, do you have anything to discuss? Any discussions? Um, no, I'm, I'm good. I want to discuss drugs and suicide. Oh my! Um, anybody wants? That's a negative subject. Oh, well, it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> it's okay. I, I'm fluent on the subject. No. Oh, Any, very good. Anybody wants to speak about that? Yeah. <laughs> I have, at right. one point. Lots. Uh -huh. I have, well, you know what's funny? I am, um, my Nana, she was dead. Like she, wow, well, sorry. She, she died in September and um, I went through this period of time where I just wanted to actually like, like that's, I don't think that's good, but I had those feelings for a really long time. And then I had a dream. And she was in the dream, and she asked me if I wanted to die. And it seemed like a test, but I was like, no thanks. And because something was telling me, no. I was like, my job's not done here yet. And yeah. I swear to God, it, it was her. It, I don't know if she was testing me or if she was legit about it, but it was one of the craziest things ever. I mean, it changed my life. I don't. I don't want to die anymore, and um, it was a huge lesson for me. Oh, so, that's great. You know, maybe she wanted you to realize that you wanted to stay. She needed you to realize it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was. A, that's very. That's a true dream. That's yeah, I think it was her too. I do too. I think yeah. it was her. I, I. That resonates with me that it's her. Yeah. That and she was saying to you, "Do you really want to die? <laughs> no. Yeah. No, you don't." I think Mike has a similar experience, don't you, Mike? Yeah. 
uh, I was uh, pretty much pronounced dead when I took heroin about 12 years ago. My, my, my breathing had gotten so shallow that there was no life in me and I was turning gray. And I was brought back and, uh, and then a year after that, I got into a car accident and was pronounced dead in the ambulance and came back. So wow. You're meant to be more, here. Many more things to do. <laughs> my, my psychic side is starting yeah. to open up. Yeah, he's in a counselor I'm, uh, for drug rehab, yeah. My psychic yeah. side is starting to open up. Is it? Oh, that's good. I don't know why. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else here? I just, um, I, I saw that Mike guy, when he was talking earlier, I kept thinking, he, you should get into being a counselor um, after you're done and work for the dr drug rehab. Um, you would be great at it. I can just see you would just flourish there. So once you get done with all your stuff, that's the best thing. Oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> yeah, I could see you being a counselor. There's, they need them a lot. People at, actually there that, you know, helps them and stuff. You could do that. That would be best. Yeah. Always come to me and stuff. And yeah. I, I'm very comfortable talking about that and and, uh, and uh, helping them. Yeah, but once you get through all that stuff and you get there and do that, you'll you'll just go. You'll just go. You'll know exactly. Well, you're so. you're in a trustful place with a lot of people because you've been there and been through it, and so you know what they've been through. So you're not just saying I know how you feel. You actually know how they feel. You're not just saying it. So um, that makes a huge difference. Yeah. That makes a huge difference. Yeah. So I see you as a I see you as a, a light worker and a counselor as well. I see you as a light worker though as well. There's there's a lot of light in you that is wanting to come out. So yeah. I see that. So how would you approach that problem? Um, you know, just to I guess you want to, to get a job. The, it would be nice to have it fully officially endorsed. Uh, I, I make money. Mm -hmm. I make money. Good. <laughs> but I don't know. You want you want that activity to be fully officially endorsed, uh, and there is no limit how far you can go. Like we on uh, blogging is great. Um, we my family is reading a blog of one of those people who who is doing. That that counselor work and he became a ma major major of the city. I'm like, yes, I think. Yeah, that's you know, I just the word a major. He became right. a major of the city because he transformed the city. Mm -hmm. So there is no limit how far you can go with that. He became really popular because you know drugs in some cities are you know the main the main problem, yeah. and you can really go very far with that. But I see you're coming out of it though. Your enthusiasm to get over it is really helping you get over it. And plus... Yeah, that'll be my lifeline. <laughs> yeah, and I think that, um, you know, are you on Skype or anything? Um, not often, but I, I do have an account. Uh, you can, if you need me, write to me on Skype. So, I, Jay, I, will. I will, Jim. You, do you have my Skype address? Um, I think it was on the human college. Yes, show. it's on the page. Uh, yes, I but, have people. I have a lot of people just writing to me on Skype now, and um, I will answer their questions. N not a, Lakesh is not answering them. I'm answering them, but um, he helps me with some of them. But can you, uh, ask, can you ask Lakesh if, if you received the song I gave him? Maybe maybe next week you can see. What was I it called? Hold on a second. Glide. What's it called? Glide. Oh, that would be right up his alley. That's why I sent it. Yeah. I'll find out for you. He's not around right now. All right, so if anyone feels suicidal, write to us. Uh, not necessarily only to us, but, you know, the colony, just post it on the colony, and um, and at least we'll send you love. And, um, and well, this win this winter has been absolutely atrociously depressing. <laughs> yes, it has. Uh -huh. Yes, it has. Oh, my God. Uh -huh. The worst. <laughs> yes. Uh, the lady in Bulgaria would not know that. Your winter's probably been mild this year, hasn't it? Oh, Eddie, she's not she, there. She stepped out. Eddie, okay. She, I think they're having a mild winter in, 
in Europe and a really harsh winter here. So, but you know, depression is not because of the weather; it's because of well, light deficiency. Yes, yeah, some sort of energy energy patterns. Yes, and reptilian sent an energy. I was told you guys. Yes, um, actually, the rep there was a bad re reptilian attack not long ago, and people were still suffering from it in some ways because they it's over and it's the energy's gone, but they were left in a bad way state with uh, much turmoil and um, anger and stuff like that because that's what it worked on. It worked on lower vibrational uh, emissions, so. A lot of people felt a lot of lower vibrations at that time and could not pull out of it because it actually hit the higher vibrational people harder in some ways. They were able to pull out of it easier too, but those that it hit really hard that knocked them down, it took them a while to get back up and some of them still aren't back up again. So. I have a friend that works in retail, and she said she didn't know what was going on, but the last three weeks, people have been so mean. Right. And yes. that's probably what it was. <laughs> last few days, people yeah. were mean. That's, yeah. That's well, she goes, that's unusually. Of the yeah. Attack. yeah, it's dwelt on lower vibrational energy. I'll have to tell her that. <laughs> and it lasted 10 days, but oh it, the gosh. effects of it go much greater than that. So, I mean, it lasted. The actual attack was two hours and 17 minutes. It lasted 10 days for the energy dispelling of it. That's a lot of energy. And it still is not fully recovered because people dropped vibrations. Yeah. So. Make sure your thoughts are your own. Yes, exactly. Oh, yes, exactly, yeah. And that's one of the things it was. You started thinking things that you wouldn't normally think about. Start thinking neg more negatively and started getting angry at people for things that they might not have even done. But you were, you're getting paranoid and you were getting the thought that other people were saying things against you or doing things against you or uh, developing something against you. And so it became uh, a very low vibration thing that they did. And um, that was the longest attack of that nature so far. Wow. Yeah, I, I write emails a lot, and recently, like, I become busy, so I write short emails and hi and bye, and and that's about it, and no blessings, no nothing. And at one point, I, I came to the problem that somebody interpreted my email. He possibly read it in angry voice while I'm sending it lovingly, and it became a major problem. So now I am very careful. I say, dear somebody. A deer stands there, and then, how are you these days of the winter? And, uh, you know, thank you for that and that. Thank you for writing yes. or not writing. Then I tell them what I need to tell, and then I exit with the same, you know, grace, and every time I put a lot of effort, just, you know, that smile is in that email. Uh, and, you know, another thing about um, people is, like, you know, women, every cycle, you know, a few days before before the menstruation, they become really, really nasty. They look at that and they want want a conflict. They want they want uh, they want that. Uh, you know, they look at everything negatively. And no, go there. Yeah. No, other way around. You treat them as psychiatric patients at these days. You say, oh, all right. Okay, check mark. Whatever they say, it, they don't they don't mean that. It's just you know the perce the perception is um, skewed or uh, distorted. So. I found that if you send them a Snickers bar, they're all fine. See, Jim got it. Jim's got it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, so, so, you know, um, may, may, men have different cycles. Uh, all right. You want to do it to laugh? Yes. <laughs> well, it's true. I worked in a I worked in an environment of all women, and I was the only man. And I would come in after a while. All their cycles were together. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I came in, and I would know exactly what day that was. I'd buy all everybody a Snickers bar, and they'd be all much happier. Yeah. And I had a wonderful day. So basically, it all comes to interpretation. If you know that they don't mean it, or they, don't, they would mean it next day, or in a few days from now, you just take it differently. And it's, it's all... It's sugar. It's uh, sugar. I mean, sugar helps, yes, yes. But it's sweetness. It has magnesium. And plus the fact you're giving them something, it's, it's, a, it's, it's several different levels of, of gratification. So...
<laughs> somebody thought of them. Yeah, somebody thought of them. It's sugar, it's chocolate, it's a gift, it's positive reinforcement. It's it's it makes the day much happier. But also there are many manically depressive males also and you also can calculate their sometimes they're obsessed with positive ideas, sometimes they're obsessed with control, sometimes they're paranoid about uh, paranoid about somebody taking advantage of them, but you really when you calculate and and correct for that distortion you you get get it better basically it doesn't make sense to be offended at the snow or at uh, some natural phenomenon right so so same thing with humans you know if you calculate it right if you dissect and analyze their behavior then there is no point of being um, upset about their behavior because you kind of treat them as psychiatric patients and you know <laughs> and yeah, I mean Reiki. Do you know doing Reiki to people? Do you want to say something? No, no, I just was laughing because I was listening to what you're saying. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's so, good. Next, I know. So I treat a lot of people. I treat them as as kids, as kids which don't know what they're doing, <laughs> and uh, where they move. Uh, basically, it doesn't make sense to be upset. You know, at the, when they hit the wall, it doesn't make sense to be upset at the wall and curse it because it's, uh, you know, it is just. Uh, something out out of your control, so there is no sense to be upset at uh, people who bother you. And from here, I wanted to go to the idea again: depression and suicide. It's all about perception, analysis, and how you take things. No. Uh, how you take things, right? Um, no, not in the back. Some days uh, the planets are just such. So if if it starts from uh, you know one person being negative, and you see another person being negative, then um, then you just kind of calculate a trend and and take it more positively. That one moves back and forth. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Her back was hurting. I see. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I, the, the book of Michael Newton is about uh, two books uh, about the soul's life after death. And, there is, uh, and uh, I recommend everybody to, to read that. Basically, you understand that you come here for experience and the depression is just part of the test. And if you take it as a part of the test, then the temptation to, take, uh, to, to, to exit before time is also a, a test. And, uh, and also, your mind is imperfect. You're fated... There is a fate, there is a pre-programmed uh, error in that. So that, that error, you cannot really get rid of that. I mean, that's my discovery. Few, many years ago, I had an a German uh, obsessive maniac depressive boss who was really mean to us. And he wanted everything, you know, he wanted to get everything straight. He wanted full, clear understanding of the reality. And no matter how hard he tried to get a real picture, what is underneath, what people are thinking, or who is plotting against him, uh, the more he tried to get it real, the, the more it became distorted in his mind. So it was amazing how he can get some things very real, very down to earth. He could know exact numbers, exact you know what people said, but but then then the whole perception and analysis was complete distortion of the reality. So my conclusion from that was, no matter how you how hard you try to get the reality, a clear picture of the reality, it will be always distorted. You always have that error programmed in your uh, Earth experience. So don't even try. My conclusion: Don't even try to be realistic and be down to earth to the way that you know you know everything. It's impossible. There is something in you that is programmed to be uh, like a dream, and things just slipped out of he your hand. And you know, no matter how you hard you try not to make errors, there is something which will force you to make errors, and that's part of the test. I mean, that's you know. You can control random things, you can control fate, and you can control even your own mind. It will always be out of control. So you have to play play with something which is not fully yours. Mm. Any comments on that? Suicide. Suicide is just one of those. You well, I, can, I can tell you from experience that I used to think everybody thought like I thought. You know, and, and so I trusted everybody and I was... I was 
nice to everybody, and I expected everybody to be the sort of the same kind of thought process, but I realized, you know, I, it took a long time for me to realize, pe nobody thinks the same. <laughs> it's like, I, I don't think like anybody else, and for them to understand me is, for me uh, to say, hey, I don't think they're going to understand me. I, I just think totally different than them. Um, they're not going to be all uh, lovey and happy and all that. I, I see they don't even think the same. So that's a one reason to start thinking about suicide is that you don't even fit in where you thought you did and then you realize that nobody thinks like you. So, But I'm happy to be who I am, so... But I did go through a great struggle in my early years, being who I was, so it was very hard. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. I feel the exact same way. It's, it's really, it's, it's depressing to feel that way, you know? Like, yeah. I still feel the same way, but like, I, I'm not the way I was before, but I'm glad I am the way I am because right. it makes me different from other people. And like, I can switch between my teenage life and go to the actual me, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that I'm so young that I'm finding this out. And I'm trying to find people my age who are aware too. Well, and You're going to be a leader, so that's why you know first. So does that make sense to you? You're knowing first because you're going to be the beginning of it. Your light will come out and show others. You're, you're, you'll gather others to yourself in some ways as you get a little older. Thank you. <laughs> well, you will. You will. Oh, thanks. This is Lakesh's, Lakesh's whole... I found that Lakesh seems to be talking to future light workers of the world. That's what he's doing. He's uh, attracting the future light workers of the world because that's his mission, is to train future light workers of the world. And so, that's why you're attracted. <laughs> well, like, if I was to become a leader, would that mean I would have physical encounters, like, with them? It's possible. I don't know that for sure, but I, I can tell you that it's an exciting world we're living in, and the future light workers are going to be amazing. I, I just know that. I'm an old... I, I can say something to that girl. I don't know her name, but... Uh, it's Kathleen. It's about, Kathleen, it's not about being a leader, but it's about how you show others what you do. It's about your your uh, experience, your uh, own example. When, yeah. when you do this your own way, this is... And you don't care about the others. This is, this is the beginning. Just doing it, just having the the courage to stand up and do this and do that and just show them. I agree. I agree. And the, your courage for coming online and talking is just part of that. So I see that. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, I wanted to comment on that as well. So um, the uh, learned helplessness is a term in psychology psychiatry, learned helplessness, we all, like modern humans, we all have that. It's part of our more modern upbringing, learned helplessness. And when I speak to some people, uh, you know, some people, they kind of feel harmed, incapable of doing things. They feel like the fate is unfair to them. And they almost are trying. Uh, they almost are crying. They almost are ready to start crying because they feel, oh, that happened. That bad thing happened to me, and another bad thing happened to me, and now I cannot do anything because my hands are tied. I am poor, sick, uh, unemployed, and there, are, there is beautiful life outside, but I'm not part of it. And I find, I know, when I look at the mirror, that's part of me. Uh, I, I'm poor. And you know, beautiful things happen out there. People drive wonderful cars, like you know, expensive cars, right here. Like, look at the window. Like next door, people having fun and they having friends and things, and and they travel. You know, how can people travel these days? They, it's it's very expensive to travel. So, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, did you see my car? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so, and um, LinkedIn, uh, meetup.com and LinkedIn are, and Facebook are places where you just cross that border and uh, you start over. And I, I forced myself to start calling my old friends. It was hard, but, but uh, it was fun. And I started connecting to people, and I just build things from scratch. That's what you know. That, that's my approach. I come up with idea, get excited, and build it from scratch. This website is built from scratch. I just wanted wanted it to create it. I, you know, feel, you know. I, I I love to start things. You know, continuing su su sustaining them is is hard for me, but starting is great. So, so I'm starting every day. Now I'm starting like. Uh, I decided, okay, I go outside of Rochester, I search for a job around the globe, and and things happen. I had an interview in uh, London, had an interview in Silicon Valley through the through the telephone, and um, and I just started contacting LinkedIn to people in LinkedIn, and um, that's a great tool, and uh, things just started rolling. Uh, I I come and offer. I can do that. I can do that, and uh, you know that's all, all, all my life. Like you know, I don't know how many, how often do you decide you will take a new path and take a new profession. I tried hundreds of profession, uh, professions. I guess you know one of the lowest points. I was really, uh, it was back in Russia. I was a uh, grave digger. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't exactly that. I, we didn't bury anyone, but I worked on the cemetery, you know, doing landscaping there, and we collected the bones there. It was one of the, you know, part of it was I was newly married, and uh, I decided not to go official path. I kind of went off my stream. So in Russia, it was very hard. You, you couldn't, uh, you know, you, you were assigned to a job. You couldn't change a job. You know, that was Soviet Union. And you had your passport and uh, the book, which is called employment book. It was in the control of the state. They assigned you to the job, like Lakesh is. Lakesh is also assigned to, to work now on the belt. I was assigned to work in the school, and actually, it was a great move. I think my guides were guiding you. You need to learn public speaking, and you know where else other than a teacher in the school you can learn public speaking, be with kids. So it was a great assignment, but I didn't get it. Uh, <laughs> I didn't get. It. I wanted to do go my own path, so you know the only choice was to you know to do this landscaping on the graveyard. Ah, oh, so starting new things and just you know from from any age, any place, starting over and uh, uh, just in interpreting things differently. Like if that doesn't work, if somebody's uh, if luck doesn't smile to you, just say whatever and keep moving in another direction. It's like uh, like a billiard ball. Is it pool? Yeah, the pool, the 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 uh, the, the game with balls. It just uh, one ball knocks another and it keeps going. Basically, uh, say whatever. Bashar, you know Bashar. Bashar is our teacher, one of the greatest ones, my favorite. Uh, he was asked about depression. You know, what do we do with that depression? He says, his answer was, get over with it. <laughs> it's all about interpretation. You can interpret that things are bad and nothing can be done and Actually, now I don't look at the stars and the weather. I, you know, I go forward even in bad days, even in most depressive days. I keep moving. <laughs> I don't set up interviews and and uh, job interviews and this kind of interviews when I can choose a sunny day. I would I would move to a sunny day. But even on the nastiest days, uh, things happen. And when you become desperate, you also can do things which you couldn't do when you weren't you want desperate. Like when you are desperate, you do things like that. And other people who are not desperate, they don't do things like uh, like Skype webinars. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> All right. How about channeling more? Are you ready? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll see if anybody comes. I would invite anybody to advise me and Jim on monetary issues and uh, give us advice where to move in search of jobs and income. That would be best. Lakesh was actually very helpful with that.
I am Tika. Hi, Tika. Hi there. Welcome. Uh, one moment. Thank you. Tika is a tall Liran working on the orbit. Muhashwa hot. Mie. Dio. Kusha. Oh, greetings. I am fine. I have come to tell you that Grokfiknir has a new member. Welcome. In the Galactic Society. Excellent. It is almost time to present them to you. It has been a while in writing the initial agreements and acceptances but we will now have a fifth species joining Grokfiknir that is our alliance with the Lyrans, Octorians, Pleiadians and Yigil. There will now be another species very shortly. They are soon to enter. We are excited because they are of like mind to us and are evolved in the sense that they are peaceful and want to help the human condition as well as the galactic condition which we also work on. Is there any questions? You still cannot name the species? Let me find out if it would be appropriate. I am allowed to tell you that it is a friendly reptilian species. Thank you. The name of this species will not be revealed until such time as appropriate. Can you describe them physically, what, how they look, which dimension they are? That would be like telling me and you who they are. <laughs> no, I will not. <laughs> All right. uh, are you, do you have any news from the colonies? Yes. Thank you. Thirteen telepaths in Colony 1, which is our main colony of growth. We are learning so much from the telepathic humans, mostly children, six of which are children. We now have six children and a teenager mm -hmm. and have learned that the thought processes from youth uh, to adolescence are sometimes very, very, very different 
Yes. There is a time of rejection of all things that are logical. It would appear they would rather live in an abstract world where they cannot possibly be harmed. Does this yes. make sense to you? Yes, it did yes, not make sense to us, but it is becoming more clear where that movement leads to adulthood. It becomes a melding of abstract and basic human need thoughts which also translate into self-worth and uh, identity. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so even adults do that. I do that all the time. We wish we could understand you, Max. <laughs> <laughs> but you are too different at many different times. Yes. Your mind is much thought, but it is not molded in one direction. It is like a gaseous cloud. Yes. <laughs> high energy, high, brownie, high temperature, brownie motion. Gaseous. Yes, okay. and much <laughs> action. Don't light a match. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. Well, Thank you. Uh, any news about the contacts? The contact is still pushed out to <clears throat> 2015 at this time with many things that have been what is the word assured that will happen but there are many actions still to remain to be accepted by the Arcturian Council but humans will be part of human contact because they will be intercessory for aliens and they will not be under control of aliens. They will be in their own state of understanding which will make humankind more comfortable because they know us. I spoke yesterday to Zechariah, uh, to someone from Ashtar Command. Are you familiar with Ashtar Command, right? I am not associated, but I am familiar. So their message was that, uh, this one was from Sirius, and they, their message was that they are assigned, they're kind of having their ships around the Earth to protect the Earth from humans. Uh, so they have their loyalty to the to the planet, and their soul wise, they're connected to the planet. So if the humans decide they like humans, they want to help us, but but basically their loyalty to the planet. So if the humans decide to destroy the planet, they would rather destroy the humanity and save the planet than otherwise. That was the message. Yes. There are so many things I could say about this communication. They do care about the planet and the people on the planet, but they do not help the planet as much as they say. They are peaceful, they are loving, but they do not know how to help humanity more than small ways of keeping them out of historical destruction. Mm -hmm. They, like us, help humanity in any way that they feel is possible without interfering with history. This is difficult. 
we do everything we can to keep your history alive because we believe that keeping it alive in this particular dimension is most worthy. Thank you. Uh, you uh, Barbara, uh, Marcia, do you have a question? Marcia? Yes. Um, we were talking uh, when uh, previous session about um, professions, uh, people helping others. Um, for a number of years, I ran a group for adults who have what we call ADD, and then they kind of all left, but that was that was very gratifying and very helpful to them, and I wonder should I be starting that kind of group up again? Your efforts to help with people with, is that attention deficit? That's correct. That is a very high calling. It's difficult because they can only pay attention to you for short periods of time. <laughs> That would make sense, that your activity would help them grow as individuals and help their attention spans become longer and therefore they could relate to of jobs and careers more easily and to each other as well. Having attention deficit is most difficult to overcome. But, yes, if you would want to work with these people, they, there seems to be more on your planet that have come to this diagnosis due to chemical imbalances than ever before. It is due to poor diet and lack of exercise, which sounds not right, but exercise releases chemicals into the system that causes balance in the men mental states as well as the body. Therefore, more exercise and better diet would cause better mental states, as you know. This is something you can teach them, as well as the knowledge that you have attained through your experiences with them. I would say this is a very worthy cause. Thank you. Any more questions? Diane, Barbara? Um, one moment. Barbara. I will be with you one moment. I hear the voices. Where are those voices coming from? It's not all the time. There are people visiting you on a regular basis. Not only reptilian, but Pleiadian and you yell at different intervals. When they are in each other's presence, there are too many vibrational discrepancies and causes you to hear things that you may should not have hear her be hearing. Does that make sense to you? But you are interesting to many species due to your physical conditions and also your mental 
channels move in a very different way than they are used to experiencing. And this is also interesting to them and us. Yeah. <sighs> yes. Um, I just had a question. Um, am I being visited at all? or? There are moments when you are visited. Yes. The reason for them visiting you is that you are transforming in some ways from one state to another state of existence. Does this make any sense to you? A little bit. I mean, my vibration, I've been trying to get it out. Yes, so. more than even your vibration. There are things going on within you that you may not be aware of that you are transitioning to a higher state. Okay. Do I have any um, connections with um, a species or different alien uh, species? I am not a... I am not to inform you at this time. Okay. okay. Uh, we have a new person in head. Uh, Hello? Oh, oh, sorry. No, no, the person in head. There is a gentleman in head. I am, I am Brian. How are you guys doing? Hey, Brian. Uh, Brian. Do you have questions to Takur the Liran? Takur, it's an honor to meet you, my friend. How are you? Greetings. I am well, Brian. How are you? Good, my friend. I'm reading up on the Lyran energy, the uh, the history of the Lyrans. I find it most fascinating, and I, I want to show my appreciation and gratitude for what you are doing, and Grip Rick Near, and all of you. I love you very much. Thank you. We are grateful that many have accepted us and want to help us help you. Thank you for not doing it so much for us, but allowing us to work with you in a co-creation. Thank you. It has to be that way. We yes. cannot, we cannot, we cannot forcefully help you. We cannot, we cannot take over without changing your natural history and the love that would naturally form and the emotion that would naturally be there, as well as your history is colorful yes. and diverse. Yes. I, I really don't have too much of a question. I just wanted to say thank you for all that you are. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Uh, we have someone else there new. Uh, the microphone is off, but if you want to ask the question, you can turn on your microphone and ask the question. I don't see the face. No, there is the new person doesn't show up. Anybody else? The questions? All right, I will read something which I have from the. Uh, Please be quick. I must go soon. All right, Fluffy. Uh, asks, ever since I was young, I would have this moving circle vision with eyes closed. I would start seeing black circles very usually moving, amplifying, dividing, diminishing in many ways. Usually they will become large in numbers and get thicker in shape. They would form patterns in constant motion. I feel like it is consuming and engulfing me like I am in a circle world of or zero dimension. In the background color, I guess, is I'm not sure. So the question is what it is, could you tell me what it is? There are influences on you from an outer source. This, let me start at the beginning. When there are many visitors, the earth is being visited many times, but there are individuals that get visited more often than others. Almost everyone will be visited by the end of this century. But, what is happening with your inner thoughts and visions is that when there are aliens close by, they have a frequency not like earthlings. Also, their ships 
resonate at a different frequency than anything else that you have here on earth when these things combine with your actual vibration and frequency they can cause swirling and and dimensional shifts within humanity coupled with the thought that there is much fourth dimensional energy being released in some areas which your area is one of them this will also cause you to feel like you are in a, a zero dimension as you said with no like you are floating or that you are not part of anything or you're detached from uh, the earth this will in combination with these other relative facts cause you to feel this way and have these certain emotions it is nothing to be concerned about because it will come and go but it does not affect you unless you want it to now the ways you can have it affect you would be to accept it and actually become part of a meditation at that time which would be an ultra high vibrational meditation and this would help you to move out of your body and see things that you might not normally see thank you Take care. do you have time for my personal question Either way is fine. Yes. I started last time around the noon. I started a communication with a company located in Nevada. Um, they're doing optical things and some sort of genetics and optics and uh, molecular biology and optics. And they seem to be connected to military uh, and financially and otherwise. Uh, do you have any advice on me proceeding communicating with them? Yeah. They have many, many connections to military for reasons of advancing, uh, targeting, and not only that, but they can see ships light years away now. Their optics have become very great, not anyone on Earth knows as much as this particular place about seeing far out into space your connection they will not accept you i am sorry oh so i shouldn't spend my much energy all right uh i was hoping to get investment or a job there they will not accept you i am sorry all right, thank you. Any any leads which I should pay attention to? The London one is London. Any any hope with London? There are still strings attached to you from London. Anything anywhere else I should dig for a job or investment? Uh, I will. S one moment. You must continue your search in a natural way. I am not allowed to give you leads, but there is somewhere you have not gone yet that has great potential for you. Keep looking. Uh, should I still look in Rochester? How, how prospective is Rochester? It's within the United States. That's good enough to know. Thank you. Great help. Um, anything else? I must go. Thank you very much for your visit and and for your help. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. I must go. Blessings to you.
Hey, uh, do we have anything else to discuss? You know, I can talk about other things, but I think uh, maybe it's a good time to wrap up. Anybody has any comments on anything? I, I just want to say hello, Jim. Hey. How are you? I'm, I'm Brian. Hi, Brian. How are you? Pretty good. Uh, down the road, I'd like to have a private session with you. I, I'm so drawn to uh, Lakesh, oh. and uh, he just has a wonderful energy. Oh, I love cool. it. Very cool. Uh, do you, my um, my uh, Skype name is on uh, on the site. I think just yes, write so to me you. through there, and I will get back to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Max, for all that you do. Also, oh, Max does the site. He's really good. Cool. Yo, welcome. Today we have one, two, three, four, five, six visitors on uh, on the webinar through internet, and we have three visitors from uh, from local place. So. Nine people today attended. That's great. Uh, find jobs and help us. Anything else? Yeah, I got the job, so. Oh, and they good. To pay pay the rent for the apartment. <laughs> That's very unusual in Sweden. Oh, very good. Oh, very good. You'll see some money on Friday, Max. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Much love to everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, very uh, much. Do a blessing. If you, if oh, you, I'll, I'll say a blessing for you before you leave, okay? And so don't go yet. I'm, I'll uh, do a little meditation here and say a little blessing. I just want to thank you, uh, God, Father, White Light, Great Energy of the Universe, giver of life to all of us. Thank you very much. We just ask that you will be with us and guide us and bring us on the path that we should go on and help us with enlightening humanity. That's a tough job. There's a lot of people that don't want enlightened and there's a lot of people that have no idea what enlightenment is. And We just ask that you would just give them a spark in their brain and their understanding that there's something great beyond their money and beyond their things and beyond their whatever, whatever they're concentrating on, even beyond their families, although we want you to keep them loving them, but there is something great in this universe and something wonderful and loving and good that's happening to us. And we just ask that you help us move forward and become closer to you closer to light, closer to love, closer to telepathy, telepathy so that we can share even greater things with each other. So love, 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 love you and thank you and praise you and none of this is me and I give you the glory and honor. Thanks. Amen. Thank Amen. Thanks. Thank you. Goodbye. To all, all out there, I, I, I got in here a little late, but I wanted to say uh, to all of you, you're all beautiful, and just uh, keep up the good work and sharing with everyone. Thank you. Thanks. You too, Brian. Thank you. Thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank bye you, bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, all of you. Sure. Uh, I'm starting to get, I'm starting to get Skype.